We recently inaugurated a national Native American pro-life organization called Life is Sacred. One of the most basic tenets of all of our cultures is to stand and protect those who are the most vulnerable, who are the most weak. So the elderly, uh, the sick, our children, and no group of people fit that definition more than the unborn. We're from the Sichangu Lakota tribe in South Dakota, and it's been an exciting trip this whole time to support the unborn, and that's what we're here for, is to support the people who can't defend themselves. Until 1924, Native and Indigenous peoples were not recognized as persons under the laws of the United States, and this in part led to the decimation of many of our peoples. Today, the unborn are not recognized as persons under the laws of the United States. In the past, we believe that too few stood by the lives of our peoples to defend them, and so today we stand for the lives of all peoples, born and unborn, in order to build a culture of love and a civilization of life. Maybe us marching, pounding on those drums and wearing our traditional attire and walking with everybody else maybe might turn a few heads and make people think a little harder as to what's going on. John Paul was a champion of that truth, goodness, and beauty in Native culture. And we're actually really excited to be here in D.C. this weekend to be able to go to the shrine of John Paul II and to thank our patron saint. In a lot of ways, John Paul is the patron saint of Native peoples. St. John Paul II actually dignified our people. He always indicated that you should hang on to your spiritual ways and bring them into the Catholic faith. So pro-life, especially to me as a Native American, as a Knight of Columbus, as a Catholic, means not only coming here today to march for the unborn, it means stand for the unborn, stand for those who can't stand for themselves, but really stand for all life, from conception until national birth.